Ready, Freddy? Okay. So, I grew up in small town northern Alberta, where for, in my teen years I worked at the hardware store, the local hardware store. And small town means charge accounts, so one day a month found me at the front counter spending a better part of the day stuffing and sealing envelopes with bills, putting the bills in them. At one point, a gentleman walks in and purchases an anniversary card for his wife, which I very promptly stuff, seal, bag, and hand back to him with my best, thank you, come again, smile. <laughs> he just looked at me open mouth and was like, I kind of wanted to write in that first. <laughs> But doesn't it feel like our habits can be formed almost that fast? Our bad habits, that is. Whereas we feel like we can go for years and not form a single habitual virtue. But virtue is the habitual and firm disposition to do good. It is what we are made for, in God's image for. It is the only thing that is going to give us joy and joy eternal. And that's why I go to my mom. That's why I go to Mary. <laughs> because she had such immense strain in her life and she had a sword of pain buried in her heart. But she loved habitually. She rejoices, she ponders. She was at the cross, habitually loving. How? Blessed Father Sapochko, our founder, says that she is our mother of mercy precisely because she was the most thankful for God's mercy. She recognized fully the gift of the Almighty, her son. She, more than anybody else, received mercy in the form of preservation and preparation. Even in her Magnificat, she praises the mercy of God given to the generations, to the fathers, which ended up giving her life and faith. How often do we take time to even praise God for the mercy he gave our mom, our dad, our grandma, our grandpa that gave us life? And really for me, it's not necessarily in seeing Mary as the perfect lady, but as the one who has received the most mercy that makes me feel so close to her, so one with her in all the mercy that I receive. I need Jesus, she needs Jesus. St. Catherine of Siena writes that she asked the Lord, why when you were already dead and your side was opened, did you want your heart to be pierced and parted? And she writes that our Lord responded, there were plenty of reasons, but I shall tell you one of the chief. My longing for humankind was infinite but the actual deed of bearing pain and torment was finite and could never show all the love I had. This is why I wanted you to see my inmost heart, so that you would see that I loved you more than finite suffering could show. I showed you this in the opening of my side. There you find my heart's secret, how I love you, and I show you this without limit. Mary received all this mercy and it demanded a response from her. It made her incurably gentle and determined. And she was merciful as the Father is merciful, as he asks us to be in Scripture. But can we actually give God the mercy he has given us? Can we love God in the way he loves us? He tells St. Catherine, no, you cannot give me what I ask for. I have loved you without being loved. But you love me, the love you give me, you owe to me. You love me not gratuitously, but out of duty. Whereas I love you not out of duty, but gratuitously. Therefore, you cannot give me the love I ask. But he asks it of us. So how does he make a way? He continues, therefore, I have put you among your neighbors so that you can do for them what you cannot do for me. You can love them without looking, without concern for any thanks, without looking for any profit for yourself. What does this look like in everyday life? It looks like virtue, <laughs> which we'll be digging into in the next few videos. It looks like the cardinal virtues of temperance, prudence, fortitude, justice, 
looks like the theological virtues we get a baptism of faith, hope, and love. But once we're impelled by mercy, how do we acquire these virtues? How do we acquire habitual love? Teresa of Avila is very frank. By being determined to work and to suffer and to do so when the occasion arises. Steven Jensen describes virtue and vices like this. It's like getting to a big field. And in that field, there's a path. And it's the path of our bad habit, and it is well trodden. We need to trod another path, a path of virtue. But that is going to take great effort because there's no path. And so we have to hack down those brambles. We have to trip over those bushes. We have to sweat it out. But eventually, as we take that path, as we work at it, it's going to become more and more well-trodden. It will become easier and easier. It will become the easiest path to take. And that bad habit is going to be overgrown and difficult. And the best part is that because the love of God is without limit, our growth in virtue is also without limit. In The Horse and His Boy, uh, Shasta has just crossed the desert. He's faced the lion. And now he's told to go on foot to go warn King Loon. He is really feeling sorry for himself. And C.S. Lewis writes, he had not yet learned that when one accomplishes a task well, his reward is often to be set with a harder and a better task. So let us, this Lent, take one of our bad habits, go find the cardinal virtue that counters it. The catechism is a great place to start. And let's determinedly Go and tackle it. Mary never stopped receiving Christ and giving Christ. May we not stop receiving Christ and giving Christ. His mercy will give us strength for, to habitually learn to love. And our neighbors are right at our doorstep. My siblings are starting an open door. Once a week, they're going to have a meal for all their neighbors. They're just going to welcome them. And those who want to come can come. They know they have some neighbors who are terribly lonely. Yesterday, I was at the hospital in the morning, and I was just a man who was just weeping, weeping for loneliness, weeping for despair and all his sufferings. There are so many people who don't know Jesus, who don't know his love, who don't know the hope of heaven. Last night, I was at my painting class with my teens, and there was new teens coming. And some of these new teens, they hadn't, um, two girls, I'm pretty sure they had never seen Jesus on the cross. When we went for a bit of teaching at the, the cross after the painting was done, they just were staring up at the crucifix. And I recognized, maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know the only news that matters. And I was able to share with them that Jesus loved them so much that he died for them. And their faces, may we with Christ have a longing for humankind that is infinite so that we just like stare those struggles to become habitually loving in the face and say bring it on <laughs> may it be such a longing of ours that we want to open our wounded hearts and just pour the love of christ out to every man and when we get to those brambles and when we're falling and when we're exhausted and frustrated we can just call out jesus help me love like you jesus i trust in you Mary, help. <laughs> help me. God bless you this Lent. <laughs>